is what it is what's going on guys welcome back to the channel you know who it is by now so we are here ladies and gents locals it has been a while indeed um i can't even remember the last time it came a bit away birthday celebrations all that kind of stuff but anyway i'm back and we are playing surprise surprise you'll find out but anyway i'm gonna see how we get on and i'll keep you guys updated um i'm here at let's see if we can get it in the shop it's a little bit backwards but we're here deep retreat dudley let's get it going catch you guys on the next one peace okay ladies and gents it is the end of round one well round one's still happening but my game is finished i managed to actually get a 2-0 win which was a bit crazy especially with dynamorphic because normally you try and just grind out a, grind out a win basically and just it goes very very close to time but um, i managed to take that one 2-0 um, I think my opponent was a returning player, so I tried to be as uh, helpful as I could. I think he was learning Sword Soul, to be honest, so he was kind of just still trying to work out some of his plays. I mean, he forgot to do a Vishuda bounce, which I did tell him about after the game, so he, he was appreciative of the fact that I let him know that, so um, yeah, it was good. But anyway, we're going to go on to the next round. There's not many people here today. Um, I think people are kind of resting up from nationals and all that kind of stuff, so we'll have to see how we go, ladies and gents. But nonetheless, I'm still going to try. We're still on the Dynamorphia hype if you have not known already yes we're still playing that deck and uh i made one or two changes i put a couple of floodgates in just to support rexton basically so i'm gonna see how that plays out but um yeah let's hopefully we can test against some of the more stronger meta decks not saying that sort of isn't a meta deck but i'm seeing a lot of punk theory and stuff floating around so we'll see how that goes ladies and gents but anyway catch you on the next one peace So coming into round two, ladies and gents, I actually played against pure Despia, which was quite refreshing, but kind of expected, seeing as it's still kind of a meta deck. Um, and I managed to uh, win the first game. So what happened was I managed to get out Rex Derm as well as a set a few back row. Um, he proceeded with some plays. I think he had branded last on the field, and he managed to super poly my Rex Derm, and I believe was it my Theresia, um, and he wiped my field. But fortunately, I had alert set. So when he went to do some of the rest of his plays, I just activated alert and i brought rex them straight back onto the field which again is just a super duper problem for most decks he did go into masquerade the blazing dragon which effectively would have killed me if he'd have known that he would have forced my rex term could he could have crashed my rex term um with his starving venom fusion dragon and then its graveyard effect to wipe the field would have definitely got rid of my rex term and he could have potentially went for game uh, but he decided to, to go for the masquerade play go for a defensive play put masquerade in defense and he hoped to like burn me to death but fortunately I'd, obviously i know how despia works so i just attacked over masquerade and i just controlled the game state from there rex term is just a hell of a card going into game two in this match um i we set up a board he set up his board just the usual despia board but he had red reboot and the craziest thing was i actually um drew red reboot off a part of duality which was create sorry i drew evenly match off a part of duality so um i went to play evenly match obviously he red rebooted me I, it was only for one but it just meant that i couldn't clear his field and he had just way too much advantage for me to catch up so he managed to take that one game three which was an absolute cracker of a game that went right down to time i believe um he i managed to win the die roll i went first and i actually set up with anti-spell fragrance which was just literally a game and that he couldn't get a fusion monster on field so between anti-spell and me drawing into like three ash blossoms he actually kind of just couldn't summon and he couldn't do anything and then uh, i think a ferret flames tim at the end of a turn which meant that i cleared his field i think he had ad libitum on field cleared his field with ferret flames and then proceeded to just control the game i couldn't draw a starter for ages it was loads of back and forth and then eventually i drew into one of my dynamorphia traps now with despia they don't play any hand traps so i took advantage of this fact i took out um, my grave diggers trap holes and just proceeded to just put in cards that would just affect the game state and uh, it kind of paid off so i eventually won that game i think i won with like 125 life points which was crazy but i uh, managed to grind it out and get the win for that so that was round two ladies and gents so coming into round three i was playing against brave dragon link and i haven't really faced this deck previously and it's an interesting concept and 
I learnt the hard way ladies and gents, it literally just had extenders for days, I think I blew two solemn judgments, I think I solemn judgmented the chaos ruler, which I thought would be, would have been correct because that card can just go crazy, um, and I think I solemn judgmented a trap and he still had enough extenders to play through, I don't even think he even normal summoned until halfway through his combo, I believe he normal summoned um, rocket synchron, which was which was a bit silly, but yeah, he managed to just blow through, blow through all my back row, all my interruptions, and then he actually attacked over Diplos for game with Barrel Old Savage Dragon because um, my life points was only on 2000 and he Diplos is only 1000 in attack so he attacked over that um, for game so that was a swift 1-0 and then in round 2 he literally just had drew every um, brave disruption that you could think of he had water in trenches he had right he have uh, he had Aramisia he also had even he also drew Draco back for turn which was crazy so after trying to trying to like play around some of his traps oh sorry some of his interaction he just act, just went into draco back and attacked me for game which was crazy just bounced my rex turn back to the extra deck and there was not a lot i could do to be honest i didn't see any of my side deck which definitely would have been a blowout because obviously brave dragon link plays a lot of spells and uh if i'd have seen anti-spell fragrance that would have slowed the game down enough for me to be able to at least try and establish a little bit more of a board or even just hopefully draw into like an Ash Blossom to be able to summon my Psychic End Punisher. But nonetheless, ladies and gents, I lost this one. It was rough. Um, yeah, is what it is. So catch you on the next one. Okay, ladies and gents, we are at the end of round three and I'm currently X1. I just lost my last round. I got absolutely slapped by Brave Dragon Link. Uh, I went first both times as well, but I just didn't see enough floodgates and he just had way too many extenders, light dragon, black dragon, dark dragon, been dragons for days and uh, I just couldn't, I just didn't have enough gas to be able to keep up with the amount of extenders he had and then when he actually built a board, there's not a lot I could do and I had Diplos on field and he managed to attack over my monster with, I think it was like Boros Lord, Boros Lord Savage Dragon uh, for 2k because I basically killed myself for him anyway, but um, yeah, but nonetheless the deck is actually performing pretty well it does have a free few problems you are living on the edge and super poly is definitely a card that you need to be aware of um a card that's i've kind of played around a couple of times but in, for the most part it will just literally kill me and if my dynamorphia monsters aren't backed up with any spells or traps i literally just die even with rex Sturm, like he's easily outed any kind of spell or trap removal which there's plenty of in the game would just literally kill me but nonetheless I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that the games are going um timing your interactions is, is a nice feeling not having to just worry about getting my combo right but just actually making a impactful decision which is a it's a bit of a refreshing way to play but anyway enough about me waffling on we've got one more round hopefully i can just keep the streak up and just do what as well as i have done and uh yeah we'll see how it goes ladies and gents and i will catch you in the next one Peace. So coming into round four, ladies and gents, the penultimate round, and I was playing against a goal second unchained variant. I managed to go first. I can't remember if I won the die roll or not, but his deck is a heavy going second deck anyway. So I managed to go first. I managed to set up my board. I managed to get a Kentragena as well as a Rexterm out on my opponent's turn, which meant that he couldn't do a whole lot. He actually went to attack into one of my monsters and a chain Rexterm's effect to um reduce the attack to my life points which meant that his dpe got blown up obviously dpe can activate in the gray which is not a problem because as soon as he hits the field again rex terms there looking at him so that's essentially what happened and then when it got back to my turn i literally otk'd with um rex terms effect yet again as well as kentrogene again in attack so it was a nice little combo so that went pretty quickly going into game two he had just way too many extenders for me to kind of like deal with um, I think he had change of heart, he had some removal, it was crazy, he managed to just OTK me and that game was over pretty quickly so we played the first two games in about probably about 10 or so minutes and then the final penultimate game it was loads and loads of back and forth and I managed to get to a point where I could normal summon my Ash Blossom and go straight into Psychic End Punisher using Ash Blossom and my Rex Term. And that literally won me the game ladies and gents because I was out of resources. He'd got rid of a, uh, a lot of my field and I was literally just sitting on Psychic End Punisher for the most part and he went into Access Code Talk, I linked off a few of my monsters but he just couldn't do anything because obviously Psychic End Punisher just gains attack and it's unaffected by um, activated effects depending on if my life points are lower than my opponents and with obviously Dinomorphia 
your whole game plan is just to kill yourself basically so my life points were just naturally low anyway and he just couldn't do anything he sat on it for a bit and uh when he got back around to my game he just thought to myself you know what extend the handshake because psychic and punisher would have just gained attack and just beat up um access code talker for game so all in all ladies and gents not a bad record going x1 at locals with dinomorphia let's go the locals is done dusted finished with absolutely fantastic locals one that i'm probably going to start maining especially as i can make it on a um, saturday evening and um, i actually finished with a record of x1 believe it or not coming second in locals it wasn't the hugest of locals um today but nonetheless i managed to um come second so my matchups were um sword soul it was sword soul brave sorry sword soul despia um brave dragon link as well as unchained and i only lost to the guy who actually won the whole tournament he went exo um and my only loss was to him and what i will say is the deck performed extremely well psychic end punisher is an mvp i'm glad i included it in the list and it was something that the deck was a little bit a little bit shy of in terms of just closing out games because once he hits the field especially with the way that um dino morphia works it's literally game ladies and gents and i'm actually thinking about putting in another alert just so i can bring back um my Rexterm a little bit more um, consistently uh, to be able to play because literally him, Rexterm and Psychic and Punisher on the field, it's literally game over ladies and gents, like Rexterm just stops anything from happening and Psychic and Punisher just, just punches everything in the face for game which is crazy but a really good locals i'm glad that i changed up the deck a little bit i didn't make too many changes but i did um change up somewhat and i included a few things in the side deck which just helped me push through certain matchups anti-spell fragrance was an mvp ladies and gents i can't even talk that card up enough it's such a, a oppressive floodgate for most of the decks in the meta today so all in all a very very good locals i actually actually picked up a few cards as well which i'm happy with. you know me always picking up the jank stuff always picking up the jank stuff but anyway i'm gonna do a little bit of a deck profile for you guys just so you can see just the minor changes that i made so i will catch you in the next one peace okay ladies and gents here is the list i'm not going to waste too much time on the cards because i've just recently profiled this deck on the channel and not much changes have happened but i will go through some of the changes that i have made so starting us off as you would expect we're playing triple theresia goes without saying as well as your triple diplos um yeah you need those in your deck you need them to resolve um keeps your traps alive for the non dinomorphia monsters, we're playing one Lord of the Heavenly Prison still, as well as the one Miscellaneous Saurus. This is just a nice little tip, especially um, going into games one. If you can manage to search this off your um, fossil dig, it just helps to protect your Rexterm from some cheeky spells or traps that your opponent might have. So yeah, Sky Prison, the reason I put him, still left him in is because the way that I see is he's another draw or another um, Dinomorphia spell or trap. So, yeah. Didn't actually see him all weekend. Um, and the final monsters in the deck is Triple Ash Blossoms, goes without saying. Most generic hand trap. Onto the spells, and we do play some spells in this deck. So, we're playing the Triple Pot of Duality. Now, obviously, if you had Prosperity, that could potentially be an option, but you kind of need your um, extra deck, to be honest. You do go through at least probably about six extra deck monsters at least so you do have a couple of flexi spots but for the most part you want your extra deck intact and you're really going to be banishing the non dinomorphia monster so you haven't got much room to resolve prosperity more than once to be honest so duality seems to work fine to be honest we're also running just to enable us to go second um double lightning storm if i had the third i'll probably run the third as well very versatile allows you to go second especially in a deck that likes to set up to go first um and you can sometimes just have a load of traps set and um and still use your lightning storm anyway so yeah and then we have for the one ofs one fossil dig one monster reborn as well as one core the grave monster reborn again just to help us to go second or if i see it late game it's fantastic could just bring back rex term and just start the whole process all over again i was running two fossil dig previously but i've decided to drop it to one just because i wanted to make room for some of the other cards that i've thrown in um as well also you don't really want to open up with too many um spells or traps you want to sorry too many spells and monsters you just want to see some traps to be honest um we're still running the triple frenzy which goes without saying as well as the triple dynamorphia domain again power cards 
Um, also running Double Sonic, which is a, a nice little tech. Well, I'll say tech, it's just part of the engine. Um, one Brute, as well as one Alert in the main deck. Um, I'll go for the side deck later, ladies and gents. But I felt like these ratios were fine, to be honest. After you resolved a couple of your um, fusion traps, you're kind of good to go. You don't really need to see any more. Um, triple Infinite Impermanence. Again, nice hand trap. Add access fuel for your graveyard effects for your Diplos and your Theresia, which is something that you need to bear in mind because when I initially tried to play this deck, I didn't realize you needed to banish a card for the level fours to float. And uh, sometimes I just didn't want to get rid of the traps or the you know, archetypes, bows and traps. So just having other ones you could banish is um, super useful. Uh, triple Judgment goes without saying. Uh, double Grave Diggers Trap Hole again, just to be able to play my opponent's turn and not worry about Ash Blossom so much. Um, double Ferret Flames, this card's crazy. I do actually have the third in the side. I'm just letting you guys know from now. That's how strong this card is. It's just it's silly in this deck. And we're also running double goals and match. Now this is the the change that I made. Um, I just wanted something else to back up my Rex turn because basically I found like I was just sitting on Rex turn and hoping to win the game and uh, that's not really a good strategy especially when you're playing a um, slower deck so I needed something else to kind of slow my opponent down so the double goals and match definitely came in handy um, I didn't see it too much but I seen it enough um, and I do think two is fine because you want to see it in combination with some of your other um, Dynamorphia spells and traps so a Dynamorphia trap so it kind of worked out uh, onto the extra deck, triple staff Burgia. Yeah. Don't think I ever summoned this. He's literally there just to be dumped out of the extra deck for frenzy. I'm not gonna say it's a bad card because it does have its applications, especially in time. Because this deck loses in time, like drastically loses in time. Um, but triple staff Burgia, yeah. it, it will surprise your opponent if you summon it. Um, I didn't summon it, but it's there nonetheless, just because I want to be able to resolve my um, frenzy on my domain for multiple times. Um, triple Ketrogena again goes without saying her effect to copy a trap is more than just being able to copy a um, fusion spell or trap she can actually copy like alert for example or even brute to be able to pop a card so she has a, a lot of application beyond just getting up um, Rex Derm so definitely a free of as well as triple Rex Derm um, I've seen some of this play too but no, I personally think free is fine um, XYZs, we have one Evil Soul Doka, one Lagia, as well as one Tornado Dragon. Now, I did change the um, Raider's Knight and the Arc Rebellion XYZ Dragon um, just for this package because I've put in one card which helped me win a game. Um, one um, Unchained Abomination, one Dark, the Dark Charmer Gloomy. Uh, I didn't really use this, but it's there nonetheless, especially if you're playing Alert in your deck. Um, you, you typically end up with the two level fours on field and you can go into um, your Dark Charmer, grab some Link 2 out of your opponent's graveyard if they're playing any Link 2s and just go straight into your Unchained Abomination. Otherwise, you can just go the XYZ route. And the final card, ladies and gents, which allow me to win probably about 50% of my games is this card right here, Psychic End Punisher. In this deck, this card is just absolutely crazy. Like, he had like a bazillion attack. It couldn't be affected by anything. Access Code Talker was scared of him. It was just absolutely crazy. Definitely a card you need. I didn't have him in my previous list and um, I regret not putting him, in, putting him in because I did have him, but I just, for some reason, I was like, oh, you know what, I can't be bothered to go and look for where I put it. I'll just leave it where it is. And it made that much of a difference. There was times when I had um, Psychic End Punisher on board just by himself and no cards in hand. And I literally was not scared of nothing. I was on like 125 life points or something silly like that. And my opponent just literally can't do anything. No Dark Ruler no more, no Droplets. Just nothing. He just sits there. He gets a million attack in a battle phase because my, my life points are naturally low. And he just basically punches anything that gets put on field in the face. So definitely a powerful card. Um, I summoned it with Rex Derm and normal summoned Ash Blast and my opponent was like, what the, what the hell are you doing? And then when I went into this and he realized, he was like, oh wow, I can't do anything about that. And, and proceeded to scoop. So definitely a powerful card, ladies and gents. I am gonna pick up probably another one of these Psychic M Punishers when I get paid, so super useful. And very, very quickly onto the side deck because there was a couple changes there. So for the side deck, uh, played double um, Alpha Master of Beast. These are just my going second cards. 
triple lava golem like i said you do not need to worry about normal summoning or summoning on your your turn if you got lava, lava golem you just wipe take away a couple of their monsters and then proceed to set four and then burn them for two a thousand in their standby phase so yeah so these are my going second cards as well as um evenly matched which i did side in quite a lot um, for the Dinomorphius stuff, I have one more copy of Alert as well as one more copy of Dinomorphius Sonic. Now, Alert actually comes up and I did side Alert in to have two in the in the deck. I got super pallid once in one of my games. Um, I think it was against Despia and I actually had an Alert set and I just brought the Rex them straight back onto the field, which just proved to be way too much of a problem for my opponent. So definitely a two of in certain situations i wouldn't put it in the main deck because i already got one in there but definitely having a second one especially when you know that you're going up against a, a certain matchup it does help the third sonic i think is probably essential when your opponent realizes you're playing back row they're going to side in loads of hate so you need to reliably be able to kind of see this or even silent judgment going first so that's why i put the sonic in also the battle damage protection um is quite invaluable at times especially if you've got like a dip loss in attack position on the field which can get punched over easily um it's useful to have that engraved uh one hope for escape did not use it it draws three didn't side it in once um as well as the other ferret flames and then finally the mvp of the day which was the anti-spell fragrance this basically won me a lot of my games as well it's a horrible floodgate you don't really need to worry about your spells and traps resolving sorry your spells resolving you just need your traps to resolve but your opponent most likely is going to need their spells to resolve and this just just says you know what slow your turn down a second and then just let me get some advantage going so um yeah anti-spell fragrance definitely a game when i stopped a couple of my opponents turns in their track so definitely a powerful card nonetheless and that is it ladies and gents all in all i'm happy with the deck um would i make any more changes probably i'll take hope for escape out and put something else in but um for the most part i felt like the deck performed pretty well i've got a better understanding of the deck now and with psychic and punisher i've got a a common end goal that i need to aim for so maybe a little bit of tweaking in sense in the sense of being able to get him out out a little bit more efficiently but nonetheless a very powerful strategy but yes we have arrived at the end of another video as always if you do like this content you know what to do by now hit that like button share subscribe all of that beautiful good stuff and i will definitely definitely see you guys on the next video hope you enjoyed peace